How's it going guys? Kels Prime here and yes we have an actual Division video for you all. Woohoo! First of many. We have so much to talk. What's that Hamish? You want me to shut it and play the trailer? How rude, but fine. Here it is. Started with the stream, take a look at uh, what's going on in year one. The launch of the Division 2 is only the beginning of our journey. We have an extensive post-launch plan supporting the game for the year to come. This content will be free and accessible for everyone. It all starts shortly after release with the introduction of Tidal Basin, a new challenging faction stronghold held by the Black Tusk. Next up is the launch of Operation Dark Hours, the first eight-player raid in the history of the Division. Team play and coordination will be the key to success. As the year unfolds, we will be releasing three new episodes. Episodes are free major content updates with additional narratives and missions, new PvP and PvE modes, as well as three entirely new specializations. New threats will rise as the situation in Washington, D.C. evolves. Our first free episode, D.C. Outskirts Expeditions, will take you to the surrounding areas of Washington to fight for the liberation of the city in two additional main missions. The first major update will also introduce a new game mode. Division agents must form an expedition to investigate the fate of a lost convoy, encountering unexpected threats along the way. The second free episode, Pentagon, The Last Castle, will host its own narrative extension with additional main missions and introduce a new experience, as agents will have to storm the Pentagon and unveil the secrets that hide beneath one of America's most iconic locations. The third free episode will close the first chapter of the Division 2 storyline and pave the way for even more content to come. We will also introduce three entirely new specializations. Each of them will bring in a new unique signature weapon and skill tree to unlock and master. New endgame specializations will help you redefine your own personal playstyle as you take on new high-level challenges. The Year 1 Pass owners will enjoy seven days early access to the episodes, instant access to the specializations as they release, a series of eight classified assignments revealing more about the fall of DC, base of operations projects, more bounty targets, as well as trophies and unique customization items. The Division 2 is an ever-evolving game that we are committed to keep improving upon as we listen to community feedback. There will be vast amounts of varied new content deployed in the coming months. No matter your playstyle, there will always be something new for you to experience. We look forward to seeing you on the streets of Washington, D.C. That was a pretty well done trailer as far as trailers go, right? UB Massive had their state of the game today and much was spoken about from Year 1 Pass, monetization, Year 1 content which is also free, the paid for Year 1 Pass and more. So let's get going. Tidal Basin will be the new challenging stronghold run by the Black Tusk that you'll have to engage. Now what is interesting here is that Yannick says this is the final stronghold. Maybe invader missions are related to these, or there will be more inherent strongholds, I'm honestly not sure. It's all speculation on my part here, but one thing is for sure, more endgame is good endgame. Just no more Falcon Loss hiding behind the wall endgame please. This is expected for release shortly after the launch. Next we get a glimpse at the 8 man raid in the Division 2 called Operation Dark Hour. Almost nothing is known about this content outside of the fact that it will be the hardest content in the Division and will be available globally at the same time for those wishing to go for the world first. The trailer then talks about the three new episodes that we get in Year 1, which will be released in the summer, autumn and winter respectively. Episode 1 is called DC Outskirts Expeditions. It will provide two new missions to further the narrative as well as a new game mode which I am calling The Lost Convoy. Again, we only get glimpses of both and nothing substantial, but it's nice to see they are finally starting to give us the narrative that we so yearn for. Here is hoping it's good narrative, right? Episode 2, Pentagon, The Last Castle, again will provide new missions and game modes. This may follow the same formula as Episode 1, or may be completely different. The contents were not disclosed, so it's a big unknown as of now. 
I'm hoping for freeform missions with more Nereithu personally, maybe, who knows? And finally, episode 3 will conclude the year 1 storyline and prepare the user for the year 2 content. Overall, it's a pretty sweet package so far and one that is actually delivering a lot more out the gate. In fact, it's delivering more than Anthem and you'll know how I feel about the game. Yes, I like the game, okay? Now I'm just going to go and start barricading my windows because I'm pretty sure the anti-EA crew is just around the corner. Be right back. Right, now that's sorted. So we get clarity and transparency on Year 1 Content Pass. For those investing in this with the gold edition of the game, and as a note, the Year 1 Pass will be available separately as well, likely shortly after launch for those that don't get the gold edition, you will get 7 days early access to all content, including episodes. You'll gain access to all specialisations from the beginning and you will not be required to undergo the quest or objectives in order to unlock them. The specialisations will simply be unlocked from the get-go. You'll get 8 classified assignments which tell the story of how Washington DC fell, so essentially a prequel. This is probably the one I feel most cheated on, but in the end, they needed to place a carrot to entice people to buy into it. This is probably going to be the carrot for me. As you know, I'm a massive, massive story buff. I do enjoy my story in video games, and for me, they are paramount. So the fact that they're actually now putting this behind the paid for DLC kind of sucks because it does mean I'm now more inclined to pay for it because I want to experience it. You'll be getting base of operations projects, including extra daily projects and one extra weekly bounty. They say no extra rewards will be given, but I think there will be because it just makes no sense that you're going to get an extra mission that you're going to go and do and it won't be rewarding. However, considering it's only one extra weekly and maybe one or two extra bounty, I don't think that's that much of a problem. Outside of the big update drops, there will be smaller content drops that will also add gear and things for you to collect along with three more new weapon specializations which again will all be free content for you all to enjoy. In terms of what you're getting, you're not getting that much but if you're a story buff then you're going to want to invest in this. If you want to gain access as soon as possible to all the content, you're going to want to get this. If you want that one extra weekly bounty or the extra dailies, you're going to want to get this but all in all there's nothing here that's pay to win, there's nothing here that's going to give you an advantage over someone else outside of the early access of 7 days. But that's pretty much story related content, it's not going to give you anything else. In a weird turn of events they decided to start talking about the weekly maintenance and the biggest thing here is that the weekly reset after maintenance which will take place on Thursdays will also trigger the weekly reset. I know, it's not Tuesday. How awesome is that? Finally, a game that's gone out of the norm. Everyone resets on a Tuesday, but not The Division. The Division knows that Tuesdays is pretty crowded right now, and to fight for that spot is plain stupid. So here's a fantastic idea. We'll place it on a different day, so we've got all the player base to ourselves. I mean, why couldn't anyone else be this smart and this genius to figure this out? So Ubi Massive, massive thumbs up from me. The fact that you have this set to Thursday is pretty damn awesome and it means people can finally stop worrying about Tuesdays and spread their gaming out. Next we talk about monetization. All content will be cosmetic loot. As per the Division 1, there will be no pay to win here. They are calling these items apparel items. There will be two types of apparel caches which were formerly known as cryptic caches in the Division 1, also known as loot boxes. But they don't want to call them loot boxes because loot boxes have a bad stigma. So here they're calling them apparel caches. Like the community is completely dumb and retarded that they can't tell the difference between an apparel cache and that of a goddamn loot box. It's a damn loot box. You don't need to word it or disguise it in any other way. It's a damn loot box. Anyway, there's two forms of these. Standout caches. These are earned through gameplay as per Division 1 by way of key fragments collected in game. It's been confirmed that there will be dupes for these. These can only be earned in game. You cannot earn these by paid currency. However, as a side note, all the items that are in the standout cache can actually be individually purchased. There will be a shop 
that will have a selection of items each week, much like Eververse, and they will basically be selling specific items for you to be able to buy. I think this is a pretty good system. It's the one that Bioware's Anthem employed and it's pretty much solid. It works and it's a very, very fair system. But Chaos, you're saying, where, where's the loot boxes? You said that the apparel caches are loot boxes. We're not seeing anything here that's making me want to spend money. Loot boxes mean I spend money, but the standout caches are basically earned in game. So I can't even spend money on those. So I don't see a problem. Where is the loot boxes? Well, that's where apparel events come in. Unlockable through gameplay and or bought as loot boxes. These caches are available for a limited time only. There will be no duplicates, however, they, and they will work for a knockout rule basis. So these apparel event caches, as they're calling them, will basically be loot boxes that will be available periodically or during certain events. And these items, much like Bungie does with their events right now, where when you get an item, it takes it out on a knockout basis until you collect everything and then you can start collecting dupes. This will work exactly the same way. So if you invest your time to get the key fragments, you can get these chests and then you won't have to pay anything. Of course, we don't know how difficult it's going to be to get these key fragments. We don't know how much of a grind it's going to be to get a full chest key. So that's all up in the air. That's all still speculation. However, if you do not want to pay for the items during this event, then the items that are available in that event will be added to the greater loot pool. So if you want a specific item from the event, let's say there's 25 items and you wanted one of those items, you would basically have to pay money to go and buy that loot box and have a chance of getting what you wanted. Now, assuming that each box dropped one item, it could take you 25 loot boxes before you finally got what you want. Of course, you're hoping RNG won't hate you that much, but it is basically the possibility. Eventually, you will get what you want by way of order of elimination. So it's not a bad system, and I do understand why they're doing it, because at the end of the day, they need to monetize somehow, right? They're giving you free content. So to me, the microtransaction system does seem fair. I don't like the fact that there are loot boxes. I never will. I will never, ever agree with loot boxes. That's something I'm against, and... And because of this, Anthem, in my opinion, has the upper hand here. However, the system here is pretty fair. You get a bucket load of free content. So spending a few bucks here and there, supporting the company you want to continue making free content for you, doesn't really sound like a bad idea. And even then, it's only during events. It's not at standard times. So to me, this is pretty much okay. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. It seems there are a plethora of fixes that have been made to the game based on feedback and reports from the beta. So I don't really want to go into them because there is a ton of them and there's patch notes that have been released. So if you do want to look into that, please go read the patch notes because it is very, very extensive. However, one of them caught my eye. One of them was extremely important. There will be a cooldown now for aim assist. Why is this being applied, you ask? And it's a very good question, and the answer is quite simple. This is to directly counter Cronus users who actively cheat in the Division 1. So if you do use Cronus to cheat, one, you royally suck and are a cancer to the gaming community as a whole, and I'm happy to say this. And two, I hope this works so you can get a taste of your own medicine, because you're going to get wrecked come the Dark Zone now that you have no way of cheating. I'm hoping there won't be scripts to actually counterbalance this, and if there isn't, this may actually be the fix that we've been waiting for for Cronus for a very long time. And if successful, this can then be applied on all games that Cronus is being used on. So that is some pretty exciting stuff, and I really hope it works. Finally, they talked about the open beta update, which comes out on the 1st of March and ends on the 4th of March. There will be one new mission for you to take part in, as well as a higher level cap to enjoy. You will have more ammo awarded to you to better utilize your specialization weapons and you also have a new pvp map as well as a new skill the chem launcher to play with additionally rc cars and drones have also been eased on 
from feedback so you shouldn't be spammed by them as much as you was before. So it's definitely worth another look with all the patch fixes, all the bug fixes and all the quality of life updates that have been happening over the past week or so. Well that's pretty much everything that was mentioned in the state of the game. I hope you found this useful and hopefully I can look into covering the Division 2 more often if this video does well. Any questions or queries, views and thoughts, leave them in the comment section below. I do read every single comment that is actually made. So if you do have a question, leave it there and I will get back to you. So until next time, remain legendary.